Hey, how's it going? I'm Ida Goldwyn and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so as promised, I am back in the usual set location again this week. Um, it is a lot cooler today than it was when I filmed this time last week. Uh, we're still sort of in heat waves, so I do have the window open, so if you hear a little bit of excess noise coming in, that is why um, it's I know I don't spend very long filming these, but it is so easy for this room to just become ridiculously hot. I just don't want to take the chance of shutting the window as long as, you know, cold air is sort of coming in at the moment because my flat is at least five degrees hot than it is outside. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, that's that. Um, so I don't really know what I want to be talking about this week. Um, there are kind of a lot of things that I kind of have in my mind that I kind of could talk about, but I'm like one of those people I'm never sure if I should talk about certain things because I always get worried that people are going to think that I'm like attention seeking or talking about things that, you know, nobody really cares about and you know, why I'm talking about that, um, especially when it's a channel that realistically nobody really watching this anyway, so on the other hand I could talk about whatever the hell I want and it shouldn't really make a difference, but I do know there are a few people who do watch it and I always am a bit like, well I don't want to be seen as attention seeking by talking about these things, even though these are genuine things that are on my mind, they're genuine things that I'm bother me or it's you know, getting excited about stuff um, and various things like that. So I very frequently find myself in a situation when I sit down to film these vlogs where actually there are some things I do really really want to talk about but um, because of my own uh, fear of, of you know being accused of just doing stuff for attention or you know whatever, um, I do or, well, almost always decide not to talk about those things and then I struggle to find something to actually talk about um, because that thing that I really want to talk about is, you know, I, I mentally blocked myself from, from, being, from being able to do it. Um, so like a lot of the vlogs that I've done where I've, I've talked about my sexuality or my gender identity, um, I found them some of the hardest ones to sort of, to sort of do um, for, for that reason because yeah these are things that are true for me and these are things that are generally on my mind and these are, these are things that I generally think about it and I understand that my experience is my experience and that the things that I say about my experiences is just reflecting what I've experienced and it's nothing to do with you know, what anyone else in a similar situation to mine will have experienced because I'm, I'm somebody who's very much of the belief that no two individuals will ever have the exact same experience with anything. They can go through very similar experiences, they can go through a situation where they are both in the same situation, but their experiences of their situation are going to be different because they think differently to each other, they're not clones of each other. Um, so, you know, they have different thought processes, they have different emotional processes. So even if you're in the exact same situation as somebody else at the exact same point in time, you're not going to have the exact same experience as that other person because how you feel about it and how you react to it is going to come from all the things that you've been through previously and all the things that you've experienced previously. So it's really unfair to sort of generalise how you feel about you know, something in terms of, well, everybody who goes through this will feel this, but because that's not true, you know, you, you can have a lot of people who go through very similar experiences and have completely different emotional reactions because of various other experiences that they've had, because of how their brain happens to be wired, because of how they are emotionally wired, and those things, you know, there are lots of different reasons why, why individuals are individuals, um, and like I said, yes, you can have collective 
uh, you can have collective situations where a lot of people go through a very similar situation and, and have you know something almost identical happen to them, but they're going to have two completely different reactions to it because they are two completely different people. And yeah, some of their might maybe a bit of overlap, and some of their um, feelings may be very similar, some of their thoughts may be very similar, but their overall experiences are going to be unique to them because they are not friends of each other. They have you know not necessarily had the same previous experiences or similar previous experiences so um yeah i know i'm not making a lot of sense and i have no idea where i'm going with this kind of <laughs> but yeah um a lot of the reasons why i find it not necessarily the easiest to sort of talk about certain things is i don't want to feel like i'm talking like oh this is what it's like for everybody when i i know for what it's not and it is something that I tend to, and I, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned when it comes to my writing in the past, um, is that I write my characters as individuals. I don't write them as, um, oh yeah, anybody who's gone through X, Y, and Z is going to have this kind of reaction to it. Um, I, I always remember that they are individuals first, they are going to have their own individual reactions, that, you know, even if two characters are in an identical situation or have a very, very similar thing happen to them, um, their overall reaction is going to be different, their overall outcome is going to be different. It might be similar, but it's going to be different and it's going to be unique to them because, you know, they are two individuals, they are, you know, maybe they have two different life experiences that have, you know, happened before those points. And, um, I, I very much, you know, try when I'm when I'm writing, especially if I'm writing a character that is from a minority, to approach it with this is an individual. This is not they are not representing a group. They are just representing themselves as an individual and the things that they have been through and how it has affected them. Um, I, you know, I don't know how that affects the perception uh, my characters have because again I don't have a lot of people reading my work at the moment. I'm hoping by taking that sort of mindset and, and you know approaching each character as an individual that it does reflect positively on my writing um, and that it is a very positive thing um, to, to be trying to do and to be aiming to do because you know as I said at the end of the day I you know very much believe that you have to respect the individual uh, and the individual's experience um, and not sort of generalise things. Um, even if you're sort of, you know, aware that, you know, something that you've experienced is very similar to something somebody else has experienced, you've still got to respect that how they react to it is going to be their reaction. And yes, you can empathise, you can use what you've gone through to empathise, but you've got to uh, very much remember that you've not, you know, you've not had their life. Therefore, you cannot 100% say that you know exactly how they feel. And yeah, it's, um, and so when it when it comes to me writing my characters, that's that's always very much how I try to how I try to do it, how I try to portray it, how I try to sort of approach situations. Um, I try to make sure that you know everything that that happens is logical in the sense of it makes sense to that character or it's like that's like that's like the wrong way of putting it because um human reactions are complicated and they don't always make sense um so when i say it makes sense to that character um it's, it's not a case of it 100% makes sense because that's not how the world works. It's more that their reaction is relatable and with, in keeping with how they generally tend to react to things based on things that they've been through. And even when I do give them a slightly more extreme reaction, there is still a kind of, not necessarily a logical um, process for you to kind of go, oh yeah, it's gone like this and this and this and this, but it's still kind of a, um, it's still not completely out of character. There is still a sort of sense of it's grounded in, yeah, that is a reaction that somebody who's experienced things in a similar way to this might expect to, to sort of, you know, to sort of go to. 
And yeah, sometimes that's not always the most logical thing, but human emotions are not logical. So as long as they're sort of like it's within keeping within the character's personality and it makes sense within the character's personality that they would react like this based on previous experiences that they've had and previous reactions that they've had and, and stuff like that. It's, um, it's very much, uh, so it, it makes sense within the character, even if it doesn't make sense within like a, a wider context. Because like, like I said, um, human reactions are very complicated and they are very, um, they are very messy and, you know, I'm not the only person out there in the world who worries about talking about certain things because, um, they worry that they're going to be accused of attention seeking, even though, you know, actually the reason they want to talk about these things, um, certainly in my case, the reason I want to talk about these things is so that I can express these, these thoughts and these feelings and these emotions that I've been having, so that I can work through them and sort through them. Um, but because I personally um, feel very self-conscious about doing that and a lot of the experiences that I've had in the past where I have opened up to people um, and I have expressed certain things and, you know, when I talk about this, I'm talking very much like in my childhood um, and in my early teens um, and mid-teens and not so much in my adulthood. My, my adulthood has been a much more positive experience in this. A lot of the negative experiences that I, I've had where I have opened up to people, where I have um, expressed my, my, my feelings and my thoughts and stuff have been met with, with negative reactions or eventually met with negative consequences um, or, you know, more, uh, basically have been, you know, that, that sort of way of, of being. I now, as an adult, find myself very much in a position where I worry about expressing my, my true thoughts, my true feelings, and I, you know, it doesn't, I know it doesn't make sense that I worry about it, because in a lot of cases, talking about these things may help somebody else who's going through a similar experience to know that, you know, it's it's okay to have these thoughts and feelings. It's okay to sort of wonder about these sorts of things. Um, but because I've, I've had so much of that negative experience early on um, in, in my adulthood, I find it a lot harder to, to express myself and to talk about all the things that I'd actually want to be talking about. And for me, that, that makes sense, that's logical, and, you know, it, it's, uh, it's just how I have um, come into my, adult, into my adulthood. It's just, you know, the things that I've been through, the experiences that I've been through that have shaped me, and that have turned me into, into the person that I am now, um, for better or for worse, have left me very much with that sort of, that, that sort of thought process and that sort of feeling um, where I find it difficult to express things I want to express and talk about the things I want to talk about because I always have this concern in my head that I'm not going to be taken seriously, that I'm going to be mocked, that I'm going to be told that I'm just attention seeking because that is very much, you know, what happened to me when I was sort of um, in my in my form formative years um, and when I was sort of going through that, that process where I, I could have very much ended up in a completely different mindset about you know how I express myself and, and how I talk about things and as I said relating it back to the writing again that is the kind of thing that I think about when I am writing um, and when I am creating a character's reaction to a situation um, is that you've got to take these things into account what has happened to them or what might have happened to them during their formative years that have then resulted in them being like this as an adult or as an older child or as a teenager or you know however it is whatever age character happens to be um and why are they this particular way um what has happened to them that has made them this particular way um and a, a good example of that uh would very much be echo in the title character of, of echo um but she is very independent, she's very headstrong, she's very self-reliant, and that has all very much come from the things that happened to her during her formative years. Um, and, and a lot of the decisions that, the decisions that she makes, um, where she sort of goes out on a limb on her own and doesn't tell people what it is she's planning to do, you can very much see has, has come from, from all the things that have happened to her before, and it's not like a lack of trust, it's 
that's what she's always had to do. She's always had to have that sort of self-reliance there um, because, you know, she she hasn't had, or she hasn't been allowed to have the, the support that she sort of needed to kind of uh, want to be able to write. And it's, and it's a case of it's not that she doesn't know how to rely on other people. She does in certain situations um, because her her experiences with those situations have taught her that, you know, that's, that's the situation where I know I can rely on other people. But yeah, the, the certain decisions that she does make, you can see how very much come about because of this this need for self-reliance that she's had and this need to, but as I said, it's not even like a lack of trust in people, it's almost an over-trust in her own abilities um, and her own sense of self and, you know. So, yeah, it, I, I know this is a really confusing kind of overlap of things. <laughs> I hope it kind of makes sense. Um, I, I don't know why this vlog has kind of gone in this sort of weird direction where I'm sort of relating me not talking about things to um, the decisions I kind of make when I'm writing characters and my reactions to stuff. Um, yeah, uh, I apologise for this sort of very random and babbly kind of, um, kind of vlog. I do necessarily intend for it to be so disjointed. Um, I hope there is some sort of like logic and connection between these things. Um, but I think sometimes it's because my brain is so resistant or so certain that I'm just going to annoy people by talking about the things that I want to talk about, that I end up liking this situation, just talking nonsense <laughs> essentially <laughs> just talking absolute nonsense um but i i hope somewhere within the the nonsense there is has been some kind of interesting blog maybe um i hope there is something that someone can take away from this um but yeah we'll see how these vlogs go from here on out. I'm hoping that having this kind of mess of a, of a vlog means that maybe in the future I might be able to talk about some of the things that I do actually think about um, and some of the things that I do genuinely want to talk about on this channel um, rather than sort of like sitting down and then completely dismissing that thing that I've been thinking about talking about all week just because I yeah <laughs> and it is literally just because yeah um as weird as that sentence is um to, to actually kind of think about um sometimes i will just completely drop whatever it is i had wanted to talk about just just because i i sat down and i just sort of like felt no, i i can't talk about that um people are just going to think that i'm i'm doing it for attention people aren't you know don't take me seriously, this, that, and the other, and then I'm like, if nobody watches this, why am I so worried about these things? <laughs> but in a lot of ways, I can't, I can't help, like, the thoughts that I have about it and the feelings that I have about it, but I'm hoping, but even though this has been a very messy vlog for me to kind of get that point across, um, that by sort of, like, saying, like, I'm not, Talking about these things just for attention it is generally things that I think about, it. it's generally things that I worry about. And sometimes it would be nice just to sort of have a forum where I can sort of express those thoughts. And I found that a lot of my blogs where I have just, you know, talked openly about various things have been really good for helping me um, sort of formulate my thoughts and, and, and get through my thoughts and stuff like that. And sometimes it's just nice just to say things out loud. Um, rather than just have it all going on in your head. Um, I, I very much live in my head and, um, a lot of the time. Um, so yeah, I'm, I may or may not start broaching some of those topics that I have floating around um, in the back of my head. Um, we'll see. <laughs> we will very much see. Um, yeah, uh, so I hope this one has been sort 
think is interesting. Maybe I hope you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is I will talk about next time. And I will see you next time. See ya. <laughs>